Ending Brooklyn's five-game winning streak, the Bulls' 38th overall pick in Ayo Dosumu dropped his third game of scoring at least seven points and his second game of scoring at least 14. Ayo's career night, plus DeRozan and Levine's combined 52 on 20 for 37 shooting, gave Chi-Town a 23-point win against the steaming Nets. Vooch had three blocks, 13 boards, and five dimes. Derek Jones Jr., Tony Bradley, and Alex Caruso gave coach Billy Donovan solid minutes off the pine. Those three, along with, of course, the most shocking player in AO, are proving that the Chicago Bulls have underrated weapons everywhere on their roster. So, can this team compete for the top seed in the East? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel if you're looking for NBA hot takes, predictions, and stories on a wide range of teams and players, you came to the right place. If you're an NBA fan, subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up on this video for the YouTube algorithm, it'd be greatly appreciated. The duo of Levine and DeRozan, in addition to Nikola Vucevic's beastly production on the boards and the elite playmaking of Lonzo Ball, are undoubtedly Chicago's most dangerous weapons. Having said that, I know from experience, because of my Raptors winning it in 2019, that you can't win a championship without a legitimate roster 1 through 15 filled with role players. It's not all about the superstars. Leaving off Patrick Williams due to his tragic wrist injury, which will keep the sophomore out half a year, the eight members of Chi Town's supporting cast I'm about to mention have a chance to contribute to a deep run in 2022's playoffs. Some have more value than others, but each of these guys I'm about to break down provide a fundamental quality or two which could massively boost the Bulls' chances this season. The 6'5", 200-pound guard in Ayo Dosumu played three years at Illinois, even posting 20 points per game in his junior year. Ayo received the Bob Cousy Collegiate Point Guard of the Year trophy, and he was a consensus first-team All-American in his third NCAA campaign. Ayo's Draft.net scouting report stated that his weaknesses were that he lacked elite athleticism and speed, that he must make up for with ball handling and a quick first step. At the draft combine, Dosumu proved that analysis wrong, posting a 39-inch vertical jump. Ayo's name wasn't called until Mark Tatum was on the stage in round two, as he was taken in that round's lottery, ending up as the Bulls' number 38 overall selection. That far down in the draft, Ayo is looking like a complete steal with the Bulls, he posted 15 points and 6 rebounds at home against the Nets last night, showing off his ability to get extra possessions for his team on the glass, along with a bit of the fluent scoring in his bag. For such a young and inexperienced player, Ayo's pretty polished. Ayo can shoot over the top of anyone in the mid-range, and he rises up for his jumpers with such poise and sound fundamentals. Dosumu is a pesky defender with his 6'10 wingspan and 8'0 standing reach. It's shocking he wasn't selected in the first round, but good on GM Mark Eversley for swooping in and drafting the product of Illinois. Maybe the most underrated player on the squad, perimeter phenom Javante Green, is an extremely solid low post score, a passing lane menace defensively, and an explosive finisher. For his 6'5 height and 205 pound frame of pure muscle, Green can get down the floor in transition, similarly to a small guard. In 18 minutes per night early on, Javante's chipped in at least 5 points in 6 different games, but it's what this man does defensively that makes him most valuable. Green's lack of minutes doesn't qualify him for the spot, but his defensive rating right now would be good enough to rank him number 7 among all small forwards right behind the reputable Royce O'Neal. Javante is one of the least recognizable names on the team, but since entering the league in 2019-20 in Boston and now Chicago, Javante's carved out a nice role for himself in the pros as a versatile, high-energy wing player who's also capable of spacing it out with a jumper. Speaking of non-recognizable names, the Pacers' number 50 pick from 2018, Alize Johnson, spent time in Brooklyn after moving on from the Pacers, and he earned himself a two-year, $3.6 million deal with the Bulls on September 8th. 
Alize has had a few DNPs, but he's a big mobile forward who at his best can be an absolute pest on the glass and defend the opposing team's best big man up front. He's still learning with only a few years of NBA playing experience, but the 25 year old's going to be around for a while with his defensive instincts and IQ. Alize's offense, however, needs to be more consistent if he wants to move up in this deep shy town rotation filled with athletic, valuable players at his position. The team's fifth leading scorer, top perimeter defender, and primary playmaker off the bench in Alex Caruso still doesn't get the respect he truly deserves. I know he's the NBA's biggest fan favorite getting MVP chance, but people just view Caruso as a meme at this point instead of taking in his truly authentic value on both ends of the floor. AC ranks number four among all point guards in defensive rating. He's averaging 2.3 steals per game, which ranks him number five among all players in general. He's shooting a career best 46% from the field, so it's safe to say the Caruso's playing the best ball of his life in Chi-Town. The Wizards' number 15 pick in 2018 has found a home with a change of scenery to Chicago. An extremely solid, lengthy 3 and D talent, TBJ is posting a career high in 3 point percentage and is an extremely bothersome presence on the wing with his high energy and 8 foot 9 standing reach. 23 year old 6 foot 10 freight train up front in Tony Bradley is now a 5 year pro playing with his 4th different organization already. Tony's an old school big man who takes up a ton of space, can set impressive big body screens, and he's an excellent finisher through traffic. Tony grabbed four offensive rebounds in the win against Brooklyn last night, while Bradley's shooting percentages in the paint have fallen off from 74.2% last year in OKC to a measly 53.3% in the Windy City. The advanced stats tell a different story. Bradley's third on the team in player efficiency rating, right behind DeMar DeRozan, and the next man I'm about to break down in the former dunk champ that's not Zach Levine. Adding to the long list of wing options that Coach Donovan can pull out of his hat at any given time, Derek Jones Jr. has found his place in this deep Bulls rotation. Derek's slight build and 7 foot reach, standing at the height of 6 foot 6, allow him to cover a ton of ground. Jones Jr. has sensational quickness for his size, but what makes the former Blazer, Heat, and Suns player so dangerous is the man's vertical jump, which Derek himself claims to be an out of this world 48 inches. He may never be anything more than a role player, but at still just 24 years of age, the upside that Derek still has is really under talked about in the NBA universe. If he becomes more consistent with that jumper, Derek could be as good as he wants. If the Bulls front office gives him that time to make mistakes and grow, then I think anything is possible with this man. Only one spot below Caruso in defensive rating. Since we're mentioning things about Chicago that are underrated, how about I point out Zoe's defense? I've gone more in depth on Lonzo's clamps in other Bulls videos I've made recently, but I just wanted to point out how impactful he is on this end of the floor and how little respect he gets for being one of the better guard defenders in basketball. Lastly, before deciding if the Bulls are going to win the number one seed, my Raptors signed Matt Thomas as an undrafted free agent a few years ago, and now he's on the end of the Bulls bench. It's great to see Thomas on a team with so much shot creation. He's the perfect fit on this team, but he hasn't cracked the rotation quite yet. However, a spot-up shooter of Mr. 99%'s caliber can always win you a playoff game. Chicago is going to need Matt Thomas at some point down the line this campaign, and Thomas is more than capable of coming through with distance daggers to space out the floor for the Bulls' high-volume scores. Since Matt fits into the offense, expect him to receive some PT in the near future. After breaking down all that, am I predicting the Bulls will be the number one seed in the East? Let's hold up just a tad bit. While I'm going to say the Bulls are going to be a top four seed in the East, the roster continuity still just isn't quite there for me to say they're going to surpass other teams who've been playing with each other for years. With that said, the postseason is a different story. By that time, building up chemistry won't be an issue, and Chicago's star power with well-sized and suited scores like Levine and DeMar and a stretch big phenom in Nikola Vucevic 
that's going to make them an impossible team to beat four times out of seven. So number one seed in the East, no, but legitimate threat to win it all in 2022, absolutely. Will Chicago be the number one seed in the East in your opinion? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to respond. This was D-Flow, you're the best for sticking around and I'll see you next video.